Welcome back, everybody, to the Collegiate Valorant League, hosted by the Gamers EDU, hosted by me. I'm your part-time host slash full-time sage and Reyna fanfiction writer, Queen McRib, and I'm super excited to cast these matches for you guys tonight. We have some stacked matches, starting off with CSUN Black versus SFSU. But before we get into it, I just want to remind you guys about the mission here at the Gamers EDU. We really want to focus on the mental health and well-being of the gaming community here on Twitch. And I know it's super ironic to be told by an Overwatch player to not be toxic, but don't be toxic, okay? It's cringe. And if you do find yourself needing resources to cope emotionally or mentally, please reach out to the Gamers EDU. We have plenty of resources in our panels below, in our Discord, and on our website that you guys can access. And now... I am here to welcome the lovely casting duo of not Eli the Curry and the OG Vent, but Eli the Curry and Funny Man. Hello. I'm back. What is up, y'all? <laughs> we are doing something a little different this time. We got a new new combination out here. We switching it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keeping you on your toes. Oh, yeah. Can't get complacent. Thankfully, Funny Man able to come through for us in the clutch. Glad to see you, man. I'm excited. We have absolutely no time, um, you know, to practice this, so we're doing it live. <laughs> live edit. <laughs> Hashtag live edits. <laughs> All right, so McRib, you did mention uh, today we are going to be watching Cal State Northridge Black going up against San Francisco State University. These two teams sitting uh, near the top of the tables. San Francisco State right now, two and two. So they're looking to get on the plus side of 500. Meanwhile, uh, Northridge Black working still on an undefeated season. They're three and zero thus far. Uh, Funny man, I throw this to you. What do you think about these two teams that we're going to see? And uh, what are you expecting out of today's game? I have a lot of high expectations for uh, Northridge Black. They're three and zero. I think the only other team that's three and zero is San Jose State University. So or four zero actually. So if they win this round, that's going to be really huge for them. Four zero, two four zero teams. That could change this week, of course, once they play. Um, and whoever takes a loss, and they're probably the only teams that at uh, have the highest ranking. But it shows good on the other or side of the, the spectrum as um, the the other team has to show up at the end of the day. So it's going to be. For me, what I'm seeing here is like a battle to show who's who's better right now because one team can go 0-4-0 oh, no, and another team can add another win on their plate, which advances them. And to get a win against somebody like CSUN Black, knowing that they're undefeated, could really help them out later on as we're already getting close to, you know, these... Uh, we're, we're in week three. We're getting closer and closer to playoffs. So that's yeah. my biggest thing. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of games, even on any given week, there's re rescheduling, things like that. It's easy to lose sight of it. But once you get down to the last couple of weeks, these are the ones where if you're a team like Northridge, who I think you would expect to win this matchup. But if you drop it because you weren't focused, you'll be kicking yourself when you have poor seating or God forbid, you know, you end up not even making playoffs. Uh, as we should mention, these students are actually playing for a non insignificant amount of money. There's more than just school and regional pride on the line they're actually competing for real cash i think it's three thousand for a radiant diamond or radiant league and the diamond league is two thousand it's going to be spread across i think first second and third place so uh that's going to be huge yeah yeah definitely need to uh you need that that's uh that's ramen noodle money <laughs> can't, can't let that slide that's closer to paying off my student loan money that's what that is <laughs> That's big facts. That's big fact. We got to do a lot more and matches. You should compete. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, looks um, like we are experiencing a little bit of technical difficulty getting into the match. Give us a second while we get that figured out. We are so sorry. We do have both teams in the lobby. We are itching to start just as much as you all are. We know you folks in the chat excited. I see all caps. You want to get involved. We want to get you in there, but we just got to get these things squared away before we go live into the match. But, I mean, while we're loading in, um, let's talk about some of the players that we're going to see uh, play tonight. Who are you guys looking forward to seeing? Um, and who are you guys looking um, forward to seeing play for the... I mean, not the first time, but, like, seeing playing again. For me, I think on the side of... of uh... 
San Francisco, I'd really like to see the step up from what happened last time. I know they, they took a hard loss when we were casting uh, one of the times, but I, I mean, you still see some consistent players like out of Momune and uh, Dabs. They, they do really well. I'm really excited to see what adjustments they've made and how they're taking uh, their their losses and actually learning from them instead of, you know, falling back down into place. So I got, I got some pretty, like, happy vibes and expectations for those uh for the team of, of san francisco because that's going to be really huge as a team collectively those two team the players specifically but collectively i'm really hoping to see uh, them step it up this game right it's true and on the other end for cal state northridge uh one of the players that i look out for at the beginning is always uh poise who i think might be one of the better named players in the league thus far uh it's just demonstrated an awful amount of poises we're getting a this early pistol round here, as you see, getting into things. Data are on the screen there against Fiesta Nino. This is going to be San Francisco State on the attacking side. Alvinius and Cal State Northridge Black on the defending and coming in for these first 12 rounds. Spike planted. It's going to be really huge right now. Poise getting the uh, first blood with that headshot on Data. Right now it's a, five, a 3v2, 3v1. He's trying to get more shots, and Ben is able to shut down Momune, and they get a point on the board for the side of CSUN Black right now. It's looking really good for them. As I, I think what we've seen in almost every game, they get the man advantage. It was 3-3 at one point. Kills started flooding through, and all of a sudden they couldn't really get the momentum change there. And the rounds get swept right underneath them. But uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm, I mean, I don't know if, if they're going to be able to pull off anything just because they lost this pistol round. And we see such heavy investments on the side of T Sun Black. We already see Phantoms coming out from several players. They're, <laughs> that's a heck of a statement saying we're going to win the second round so we don't have to worry about our economy being blasted because this would really hurt their economy if players start falling. Yeah, that's one thing we've started. I, I feel like uh, McRib, Bent, and I have seen over the past couple of matches is an aggressive buy strategy from these teams even second round you know after the loss teams just buying in still trying to get weapons and push back i feel like maybe after week one uh, these teams felt that the momentum was going too far if you lose a pistol round you know the common consensus is save up you're gonna need you know to, to build up your losers bonus before you can do something and if you win just kind of ride on it but as you mentioned the the momentum definitely in northridge's favor right now is they invest heavily and they win heavily a flawless victory that was great to see. We just see three players drop within an instant. All of a sudden, we think that they're going to be able to pull something off. Two other players drop again with another moment's notice, and that's the first flawless for this game. They're looking really strong, really proud. Almost can guarantee themselves a 4-0 at this point. This is what Northridge did, uh, and I feel like we've seen it out of them. We see it out of San Jose State. A lot of the teams at the top of the table in the league thus far is they are great composure-wise. They have a lot of patience and they're very responsive you saw in the in the early pistol round that round one the spike went down and they didn't panic they coordinated they got the rotations and the communications through they turned a 3v3 into a 3-0 victory second round it's all in everybody's you know behind it everybody's with the idea and they you know they dominate the round but like these are the things we're seeing out of teams like northridge that the other teams in the league are going to need to start catching up with if they want to be able to compete yeah but right now we're seeing them um, getting some great nades. <laughs> Avilness getting the uh, 2K. Data also coming up for the team right now, but gets shut down by Poise. I think it was really huge because we're starting to see utility. I think we don't, uh, from the games that we passed, I don't think we don't see utility. I don't. I just don't believe we're seeing it used in its best um, composure, but they're smoking off all of the A site, covering the, uh, the site in general, gave them a little bit longer lasting time for the the offense and i mean that was pretty huge we, we want to see those chokes get cut off we want to be able to see a team try to make a plan to push into a bomb site so um although yeah san francisco lost that round but it was pretty good on their part to be able to choke off the points and try to get information for their team yep get a use of that those tendencies things like that this is a long game even up 3-0 you're still looking at, you know, 10 more rounds, even if it was consecutive. There's a lot of information to be gained, as we see. Avinius, again, first blood going the way of uh, Cal State Northridge. And there's Avinius, again, keeping up the pressure there. Doesn't know that there's a third kill to be found just around the corner. 
That was yeah, really huge on poise. I don't know if you saw that. He threw the boom bot, threw the teleporter, chucked the nade, mm -hmm. and I thought it was just a cocky play. I'm like, nah, he's not gonna get anything. On the kill feed himself, gets the kill with the nade through the teleporter. That is, that is a five head level play. That's Mother. poise. That is poise. <laughs> I, I've, I've mentioned it. I am a big fan of raids. I'm a huge fan of poise. Poise on rage or on raids, and I'm just I'm in ecstasy right now watching this work as Northridge dumps <laughs> out to that 4 0 lead. Funny man, you mentioned this. This was what you expected to see out of that early pistol round. What now does San Francisco State need to do in order to get back into this and salvage some of these rounds as we get closer to halftime? Well, the biggest thing is that you're seeing right now three, four, maybe even two players drop at the very beginning, which is really huge. That's not just the first blood, that's the first, second blood, and they have a huge man advantage, and that's the biggest thing we've seen this entire time. We also see, I'm also seeing that they're playing very, very apprehensive, very passive, not very confident what it's, what it's looking like because they're just kind of teeter-tottering around the map where on, the defense is playing the aggressive portion, and we should be seeing that out of something out of the offense that's trying to get the spike pl uh, planted because they have that advantage in their hand. If they plant the spike, that's adding pressure on the map. And that's the biggest thing as a, as a team. You want to keep adding pressure and pressure and pressure on the sides of the map, whether it be putting a, a stack team or uh, several men on one side, covering different lanes, pulling out an op, just really keeping them at bay. And right now we're just seeing more of the, the pressure come from the side of, of CSUN and, and, or, or not CSUN, um, but Forts and black, and it's it's been it's been great to see that. But that's one thing that I just kind of I'm hoping to see the aggression come in here pretty soon because you're not going to be able to get a first blood being on the side of San Francisco if you're playing in the back of your spawn. You need to be in engage and engagements in order to get the man advantage. It is as we see right there. Data using the ult was choking off the area. The spike does come down here, but then the retake out of Northridge as we see Poise again in the sight, winning fights, and now Poise. With the ability to get the defuse happening, yeah, you can try to get your Sova ult off, but Fiesto gonna push up, and that's so well done there. As we mentioned, the retake, the ability to refocus there from Northridge, the spike goes down. But as you mentioned, even though the pressure's on, there's a time limit for them now to get the defuse. There's no panic. There's no you know mm. unnecessary rushing. It's a coordinated attack. And then when you have somebody like Poise who's turning corners and getting the work done, Winning those 1v1 fights, it just makes it so hard to keep the pressure on if you're a San Francisco State. That was just a beautiful round. I couldn't really say much about it. It's It's been great to see, and now we're probably going to see a more destructive round come through as we have five ults on the side uh, of CSUN. It's really... I don't even know how, how the attacking side's going to answer. San Francisco has to think of something up their, their sleeve or get their shots on point because... Uh, even last round, it was almost feasible. I could have thought that the uh, Sola could have took that if he might have not chosen that Hunter Fury, but um, they had Momune, uh, oh no, a Avalis and uh, Poise were extremely hurt. The only one that was left alive that had a full bar of, of health was um, their Omen, so that would have been real huge to seek. You say Fiesto, that Omen going down there, True King. On the spike, able to get that pick, and that's a bit of a response there, but we see again, Alvinus, this is what we mean. Those long hallway fights, those tricky matchups, and he's getting it, the job done. See now the push coming in, Killjoy all down there. True King did know how right they were, and Poise gets that second opportunity, takes out True King, and just like that, it is a 3-2 advantage for Northridge. As Mamune trying to push into the site, gets, oh, Leon there, getting the kill through the wall on Riot. Spike is uh, down. That's kind of sad to see. Mamune was just getting peppered by that turret. That turret's such a pest, but <laughs> uh, that's the reason why he lost He lost it there. He couldn't really make anything happen. 33 HP let the turret just chop him down from 100 to 33. That's pretty huge for the side of, of defense. All right. We see 8 0, boys. That's I huge. mean, I mean, just, just, just raise things, I guess. Just flaw this thus far, you know. Not a big deal, I guess. Yeah, he deserves the camera POV right now. Absolutely, as we watch now, 
the work here. We've seen Poison Alvinus really doing a great job at the outset of so many of these matches. But this time, it's Mamune who's going to be able to open things up with the Bladestorm ult. So this is a very aggressive push. And just as that's happening, Ben, <laughs> ben going to shut down two there. That's going to cripple the momentum that San Francisco State was looking for. This is We were talking about poise, but it is... Uh, you know, it, it's an even play right now from Northridge. Nobody's really falling behind or lagging behind. So many people getting work done there. Now San Francisco State's got to figure out how are they going to be able to recoup this round and push in and get the spike down. I have just, the, I mean, the, the big, it's kind of hard to, to, <laughs> to choose. I'm trying to think here. To see what could help them out better in their strategies, but uh, I think their entries have to be a little bit better, and their supports have to come up up uh, on top of that. You got an entry frag that needs to get the kills, left. which we haven't really been seeing. I know Momune's right now trying to do it all on his own, but one of the biggest things is that we don't got anybody behind him. He's he's able to get it on his own, but just just like the biggest thing about Valorant, they move over to your head, they one tap you, you're dead. So it's it's a uh, kind of going to be a, a sight to see if he's able to take on the rest of the team we see poise there lined up got true king and cloud b and mamune tried to move in response to that and it was all the setup there for fiesto to finish off the work we see again 10-0 right now for poise but if you look at up and down the kill feed for cal state northridge it's not one person doing all the work as you mentioned they're just a coordinated team they're just hard mm -hmm. to break down you know especially on the defender side you really have to find that weak point if you're the attackers. When you're looking to get into a site, you've got to find the path of least resistance, press and get in there, turn the map around and force the defenders to rotate. But they've just been stonewalled at the outset. It feels like every round. They've just been getting stomped right now every round, and it looks like they're trying to set a, a different record. Last week, we were able to see a 13-1. Right now, it's looking pretty heavily. It could go to a 13 Oh, and that would be it. Unless another team can break it and do it a couple times, they would be breaking a record here for the side of CSUN Black. And um, that's something that you're going to hate to see on the side of San Francisco. But right now, I know they're trying to make ways with the Hunter's Fury. Nothing happens. The whole team of San Francisco is in the back. Still no trades are coming through. They're able to live longer this round, but I really don't know what their plays are going to be here, Eli, from what it looks like. They keep trying to go to A. They keep getting shut down. The man advantage is usually on the side of CSUN. I, I don't really see too much life coming out of these boys, and it's it's something that you know we're both hoping to see. But right now, I mean, the dominance is really on the side of CSUN. All right, well, we get a great Killjoy nade down there. That's great work by Cloud B. That's going to force Ben to move ahead of time. But did you see? There's not a lot of push there. As thirty seconds, Rigel right, was able to get it done. Cloud B is able to get into a site and get a plant. But we've seen this happen as well. As Poison is on the rotation. Alvin is getting the op kills. Data off, flicking off three in a row. And just like that, we've got a 1v1. Yes, though. Able to get it out. We, oh, my goodness. We're getting. Oh, no. That's a feels bad. Oh, wow. That is. I, I think that was win. their most success, <laughs> most successful, like, jump onto to B and just got shut down by Data. Uh, and uh, uh, Data on Fiesto. Yeah, we saw Data with the, the huge 3K to, to push that and take it to the 1v1. But then Fiesto coming around on the Omen, just comfortable, confident, wins the 1v1 and secures an eighth straight round. And now if you're San Francisco State, you're just in a... It just feels like... It's got to feel like a daze at this point, right? Like, what is going on? How are we already this far behind? Northridge, however, they're just not looking back. They just look like they keep playing the same round as we see Alvinus now getting the op kill. There's two for Alvinus. There's the confidence. Ben pressing up close, getting one, getting two. Say three for another flawless 9 0 to California State Northridge. That was absolutely beautiful. A 3K comes in. Then we get a 2K from Alvinus. I mean, those two players just carried the team. Why do you need five? Just leave the leave Ben and Alvinus. That's it. That's all they need. Two v five all the time. That's all. That's all we gotta see. I mean, they absolutely demolished. That was beautiful workmanship on the op. And 
absolute precision for Ben with the Phantom. Yeah, and that's the work that you see out of a... But it's a full team effort there because the reason why Ben is able to use that type of positioning and execute so effectively is because even though they can't see through the walls, their teammates can and the communication is coming. So when Ben finally turns up and is ready to put the site out, they know where to aim. They know where the enemies are going to be. And it's as simple as flick, flick, flick and getting the job done as we see here. This time, Leon <laughs> with the sheriff. One touch. Says, hold on now, partner. Hold on, partner. This town's only big enough for the two of us. Oh, or for the one of us. <laughs> Boys, they're able to get the kill there. True King picking up that old point. Now going to have the Hunter's Fury online. We haven't seen any ultimates really. I mean, obviously, we haven't seen anything do anything uh, to get around for San Francisco State. But maybe now. Well, nope, never mind. Okay, Poise going to go ahead and just cut cut off, cut, cut me off. Just goes and gets the kill. <laughs> I mean, Momuni's, we tried with his Blade Storm. He got three, but couldn't really do much <laughs> when you and got when you got a Momuni team that can carry themselves. I think the thing left. of... Like, it's, it's go ahead, make say again. SFS are you sorry? I was just going to say, like, I think it's a little sad to see SFSU, you know, performing, you know, not at the top of their game because they do have great players. Mamuna is a great player. We've seen them on Jet before. He, he's great. It's just like this team synergy that uh, Houston has. It's just, it's just like, <laughs> it's just something else. It is. And it's just not even terrible play during the the match itself. It's not as if we've seen San Francisco State tripping over their own grenades and smoking themselves. Like, we've seen 3Ks. We've seen some coordinated pushes. But just like we saw there, there's just been some out-of-this-world aim and gunplay from Cal State Northridge. They're just working at a level that I don't know anybody. Has, I don't think we've seen this. And certainly, I personally haven't seen it out of anybody in a match this far into the season. Funny man, your take on that as we get into round number 11. I mean, I've seen like leads, right? Nine and O's, maybe nine and twos, eight and twos. I've, I've definitely seen a 10 and one, but nothing like 10 and O going on to 11 and O, what it looks like here, because it doesn't matter when you see the, the man, <laughs> when the man advantage is on the side of San Francisco, it seems like that's when CSUN wants to just show up even more. They're like, oh, it's a 4v5. Well, let's just go ahead and wipe like four players, but we're going to do that with one of our guys, and all of us are just going to spin around in circles and just have a party. And so I, I haven't seen something this dom dominant at all, really. I I again, I've seen very huge pushes, or I've seen you know an opposing side take two, and then the lead goes afterwards, and they, they don't catch up. But uh, something as this dominant right now from CSUN Black is absolutely just crazy. I mean, I, I would have never expected it. Not that they couldn't. I just, I was hoping for this type of gameplay when it comes to champs. But we're seeing somebody who really wants to take the ring, wants to get the money, and very many other rights that comes with it. Oh, my goodness. Look and at the huge. work through the wall there by Ben. Look at the placement, the understanding as uh, the last remnants of San Francisco State try to come up through window and see if they can salvage anything, right? You see Cloud B now on this operator. That'll be, you know, and, and it it goes to show how, how heavy the work is being done as a 3K oh, there by Cloud. Oh. Great work there for it. Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead, talk to him, Cloud. Talk to talk. And it's still, but here's the thing. Up, but here's the thing. All that, and that's a round they lost. That was because Cal State Northridge was really aggressive. They knew that Cloud had the op and they wanted to go get it, right? They wanted to keep their foot on the gas and say, no, you can't have anything. So they got lined up by Cloud. He popped off and lost the round. It just goes to show where the situational advantage is and how far ahead Northridge really is that a round like that actually doesn't mean that much. It doesn't. I mean, it. it's huge. It's huge for... Um to get the kills at the end, right? And everybody's like, whoa, they shut down all the players. They have to rebuy. All the players right now are probably sitting at max capacity, which is 9K. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Like, oh, you wipe the whole team out with an op. Well, Alvinus says, whatever you can do, I can do better. So he just got a three. <laughs> Will he get the four? No, Poi nope. shuts it down. 12-2 to bring it to the half. The most dominant gameplay 
I think Which any of point? us three have ever Next seen point. during this Collegiate Personally, Valorant League. This is far and away the most impressive showing out of any side this far into the season. And I mean that with no disrespect, neither to San Francisco State or anyone else we've seen, but this is actual flawless play out of Cal State Northridge. Whatever happened midway through the week, they need to find it, bottle it, and refrigerate it. Keep it ready for the rest of the season because they are already on match point and we are in the first game of the second half. We might not even get to buy and see Northridge attack. I don't know. I have, I'm a kind of a loss for words right now. All I want to say is that I know we got a huge support from the CSUN fans in the chat. How is a hype train not starting right now? Your guys are going 12 and 0. We should be seeing a bunch of bits and subs coming in, but my goodness. I, I'm, I'm wanting to see how it's going to go. True King is able to shut out Fiesto. There's right Alvinus. now it's 4v4. Another work there from Alvinus. Uh, just a reminder, Poise, by the way, I'm pretty sure it still hasn't died. No, he has one death on him. Oh, one, one death? Okay. My, 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 my apologies. Two. two. Two deaths on him. There's, you see True King under some pressure. Ben getting into the site with the spike. So we'll get the plant here. And this is huge right now on this plant because, oh, we see right there. There's Vader. Uh, what the? There's a grenade plant there. Vader now going to get this defuse. So, all right. The bleeding is not, like... It stopped a little bit. It went to an eight, and not it's not a ten right now. <laughs> maybe it's all maybe it's all about being the defenders. Maybe that, that's what it is. That is kind of like I don't know why right now. I feel like they ripped the heart out of C Sun at this moment because they were about to have a flawless 13-0 victory. They were. I feel like maybe they might have stepped out of line and uh lost a lot of opportunity there but they weren't gonna break a record now it's gonna be 13-1 but i think they take the the cap for 13-1 i mean last 13-1 that happened um wasn't too dominant like at the beginning and then they went the whole rest of the round these guys were dominant all the way through and lost at the end so who knows see there leon with their early buy into the marksman data out there going getting busy with the specter this is an aggressive buy. Of course it needs to be. If you're San Francisco State, you're playing with everything on the line every single round. They literally have to go 12-0 and and push this back in overtime on their side. And you're right. It just feels like now everything is hanging on the precipice, right? Like, it feels like yeah. if you're San Francisco State, every shot, every smoke has to be absolutely perfect. Two rounds into their, you know, third match point now, they've held up to the task. What do they need to keep doing in order to keep this match going? They have to keep getting the kills like they've been doing. I mean, this is the most aggressive we've seen San Francisco the entire match, period. Uh, they are comp Somehow they're confident. It kind of sucks that you it has to take to match point to get that because you have to, at this point, if you're San Francisco, there is no option of losing a round. Absolutely. There is none. You have to win every single round consecutively that means no faults in their game at at all in order to get this win and so it's a lot of pressure on them it's definitely something that's going to be hard on them but it's it's doable i've seen it very few times but yeah. i've seen it there we go we saw alvin if they're getting one and data are going out there alvin is now with two got the response got mamune out there Oh, handling data, that's two very important players there. So you see True King trying to hold the wall, able to get poised out, but Alvinus with three has been advances into the site, but is it not? Oh, no, there's Alvinus with four. Oh my goodness. Are we going to get an ace to finish it off? Is that how it's meant to be? Nope. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Leon says, hello. <laughs> okay, Shut there's two. Down. Oh, Paranoia comes out. There. Is he going to be able to get it? the defuse here leon gonna get to the halfway point then and maybe wait there it is <laughs> step left up in clutches it out <laughs> ben with the clutch finish there and the 1v1 leon almost keeping the cinderella story going for san Oof. francisco state but unfortunately with a tick and a bang the clock strikes midnight 
see right here the damage done here at Cal State Northridge 13 to 2. Oof. That was the most dominant game I've ever seen. Even though yeah, they didn't they didn't get 13-1 or 13-0 like that is something to put underneath their belt and hang high for CSUN. I mean, that was huge. Absolutely. The dominance is there. 19 and 7, 7 and 15, 17 and 15, 15 and 7, uh, 10 and 8. The only one that, that went negative a little bit is Rito Games, but that was absolutely phenomenal. And if you look at the score, almost 400 score for Alvinus and only 100 part poise. And uh, uh, man, it's. It's intense. And yeah. like we were talking about, the uh, first bloods right here, we got, what is that, nine on the side of C's? No. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got four. Because what you see is we talked about Ryoto having uh, the you know the lowest KDA, right? So that would normally indicate, oh, they didn't do too well. But look a little bit closer. Four first bloods, the most out of anybody. So of all the rounds they played, 15, it was four times that you had the opening kill going the way of Rito games, which means your Vanguard is getting the work done. They're winning the first fight. And maybe, the, you know, pressing up, trying to get two, trying to turn it into three isn't necessarily working every time, but the job's still being done there. Oh, uh, man. And it was hats off to this Northridge side for putting in one of the, yeah, definitely one of the all-time performances. I know it's a it's a young league thus far, but if this is mm -hmm. if this is any indication of what the top level is going to look like, we are going to be having some fun come December. How long? Want Look, to. the duelists are at the top. There's no cipher in sight. <laughs> the solo <laughs> yeah. isn't getting all the kills. Like it's strictly the duelists that are supposed to be up there. Yeah, it, they popped off like they usually because it's it's weird. You usually see the ciphers or s some of the killjoys go off, and you're just like, what the heck? It, it's it's they're reverse. You know, they're standing on their head and looking with their feet. So it's like now they're standing in one piece. So that's uh real huge real huge it's really exciting like i want to put my my raffle ticket in the hat for the caches that get picked for csun black and sjsu four and oh four and oh that's gonna be a match that's gonna have so much heat i don't i don't even know how to respond i'm excited I would be very let down if both teams didn't just take it to a overtime and go to overtime like 30 plus rounds if yeah. that happens. That that is and definitely going to be one of those matches where like you know it it doesn't matter if I get to cast it or not. Here's hoping like you said funny man definitely want to be part of it. But at the end of the day, definitely going to have to tune in and catch that because this Northridge side here, they're not taking any prisoners. They're not playing any games. And like you mentioned they actually do have some rivals, though. They, I would say this is the, the highest performance we've seen. It's got a contemporary. There was a 13-1. You know, there's been some dominant uh, some dominant games. McRib, I uh, just want to ask you, you know, you were sitting here, you were watching as well. What do you <laughs> what do you say when you see something like this? I'm I'm like you guys said, I'm I'm super excited to see um see some go against SJSU. What I'll say is like, even though we've seen um, like 13-1 before, I think it's what uh, Eli and Alon were saying the entire time. This is the first time I've seen such a dominant team be so confident, whether or not they're getting picked off, whether or not, you know, um, there's a first blood on their team. They just, there was not one player I could focus on. It, I wanted to focus on all of them. They're all like, playing exceptionally yeah the, boy, the boys in black did a, i mean phenomenal T tip of the hat to them um somebody better throw throw some tip money to towards those boys because i mean that was absolutely beautiful gameplay i i was engaged the entire time i was like holy smokes mm -hmm. this is so crazy what what am i seeing happen before my eyes you know uh, floodgates have opened and i just saw an absolutely like catastrophe for 12 rounds straight like just the fact 12 rounds i think that's the first time we've seen it go to end at the half yeah 12 rounds i've seen it because again i've seen the other team oppose take one and then it goes 11 one at the half this yeah. was 12 0 at the half mm -hmm. yeah that, that was a very very serious threat of a complete shutout there a perfect game which 
you know, we haven't seen. I, I wouldn't expect to see it out of any of these teams. And we didn't, you know, it's not like San Francisco State just buckled and gave up. They were fighting back. There were some really notable, you know, performances, even in the midst of that big 12 round streak. We still saw three Ks. We still saw some intelligent work and some great attacking. But, you know, at the end of it all, 12 3. And it just counts for one game. If there's anything to say there, as we mentioned, Northridge, that side still only 4 0. The work's not done for them. And if you're, you know, Sacramento State, you're frustrated. Obviously, you know, you're or uh, San Francisco State. I'm sorry. You know, you're 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 two and four or you're two and three now, but still a lot of work to be done. Still a lot of work for us to do today. As we believe we do have a couple of more matches. Uh, mm -hmm. What are we going to be looking at for the rest of the night? Big rip. We are looking at another CSUN game, game, except this time it's going to be CSUN Red versus SFSU. So another CSUN SFSU game. All right. I'm excited to see that. The boy Fidget's on there. I think I'm a Fidget fan, to say to yeah. say the least. So That's a good decision. Wise choice. <laughs> Wise choice. He chose, he chose anybody else. <laughs> But this casting duo will not be casting the next match. Take it away, Alon, who will be here next match. I will be here, and we have Muted, also known as Pierce Allen, coming with me as well. So we'll definitely see you guys at 710. We appreciate it. And just a quick shout out. Don't think we missed it. We saw the hype train get to get started. 10 gifted subs out of you guys from the CSUN player. So that's really huge. And uh, we here at EDU appreciate that. But we will catch you at 710. Don't go anywhere because now I have high expectations for Red. Red, if you don't 13 know this, if you're hearing this, if you don't 13 know this, my heart will be shattered. I'm just saying at the moment. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> hey, guys.